to lift their hands. It was time for the offertory. We forgot that last night. I forgot the offertory. I was putting my overshoes on in the past study. I thought that was a wonder. All the great expenses that we have, trusting the Lord for a thousand, almost a thousand dollars a day, forgot all about the offering. Mm -hmm. Never ever thought of it. <laughs> you up here? Bro. Yeah, I was up somewhere in a <laughs> wonderful place. And came time for the offertory in Jerusalem or in Israel. And usually I want my wife to play or Sally or someone that God may lead to play. But that time I said, all the penis lift up your hands. So it may be the Holy Spirit will help me to know who's to play the offertory. And here was a young girl right over here to my left. Put her little hand up. The Lord said, she's the one. She had never played the piano either in her father's church. If I understand it right. I don't think she'd ever played in her father's church. I don't believe. Yeah, he said she had. And I understood she hadn't. And here, God said, Catherine, this backward, quiet little girl I knew when she was little. And here, the Lord said she was to play. She came up and began to play Larry's favorite hymn. And he fell in love with her. And they're going to be married in a month or two. <laughs> All because of a leading in an offertory. She played his favorite hymn, a designer. He designed her in West Palm Beach area. He was an assistant pastor of the Bible Town Church where they had two to three hundred young people. He assisted there one to two years. He missed Georgine and he wondered, he got to praying for her for fear she was wandering away. And when he found her, she had such joy and glory and victory. He said, where did she find it? So she took him over to Christ Fellowship and he never could imagine being happy with 40 or 50 people, leaving two or 300 young people where he had been in charge and helped to assist. And here he came over in there and God got to work in his heart and he's so happy he's at home. Went to Israel and... He tried to get acquainted with about all of you there, didn't he? Oh yeah, he, didn't, he doesn't know any strangers much. He just loves everyone. So God, through a guidance of an offertory. I think it's wonderful how God leads like that. Yes, sir, it is. It's great. And we're Thank thankful. You, Jesus. Praise his name forever. Say of my soul, because God's able. Lift up your hands. Those of you who have led singing in a congregation was led singing in a congregation. Esther, come up. Just as soon as you lift your hand, she said, she's the one. Just as soon as her hand went up, God said, she's the one. I was going all over these singers, these leaders, various places. I couldn't get the witness to her little hand went up like that. Jesus said, there she is. Just as your hand went up like that, Esther. I was trying to decide whether to put it up. Oh, you were. <laughs> then, uh, when I was a child, I used to leave. When you were a child, you led to like singing. Well, that's what we're to become, like a child. And when we found you, you were 10 years old. Yes, sir. And in the first session, I believe it was the first session, Jesus helped me to pray, and you were healed in the knee. Yes, sir. And you ran up and got your arms around me. I was so happy thanking Jesus for healing you. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. 10 years old. And from then on, she didn't want to stay home from uh, waiting upon God. She told her father and mother, she said, I don't want to stay home anymore. So By God's grace. And I think at that time we might have lived in Montana. Yes. Right. And Jesus healed you there. And here tonight, thank he wants you to lead the singing. I found a friend. Oh, such a friend. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, yeah, thank you, Esther. And thus he bound me to him. That's cords. That's cords of love by obedience and yieldingness and trust and rejoicing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's sing the second stanza. I found a friend, oh, such a friend. He bled, he died to save me. Every person here. Yes, sir. Thank you. Second stanza. My heart there.
Christ. I must tell you that while you were singing that stanza, God operated my heart. I don't know just how many times. Now, to me, that is a mystery, and that is a wonder, and that is a gift. Yes, sir. Now, if he worked in your heart like that, how excited are you? Huh? If he worked in your heart, are you just taking it calmly? If you're taking it too calmly, it might slip away. I want to be appreciative of God's mercy while he works in our heart. Now the first operation was he bled. That's his blood shed on the cross. That's where the first revelation was. That's the first one. I don't know how many times he operated my heart as you were singing this stanza. Thank you. Let's sing the third. I found a friend so kind and true and tender. Thank you. you. may be seated. No, don't be seated. I'm sorry. You have to keep standing. I thought we were through, but we're not. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Praise the oh, Lord. Thank, thank you, thee, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, is it wonderful for the Lord to bless us like this <laughs> in our heart? It's helping us. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna say, yeah that helps me <laughs> also. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're grateful. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. When the Lord told me we were to stand, that I know that we're either to have another song or we're to have prayer. So we're to have prayer. And uh, we're grateful for his guidance and direction. Dr. Roundtree, would you come lead us in prayer at this time? To the throne of grace, giving God glory, Jesus praise for all he has been doing for us. So thankful we have the Roundtrees. We found them because of Jesus working through Brother and Sister Morgan. The first time they came to be with us was in the summer, I think, of 1968. We found them on a campground and got into a meeting, and God came on the scene, and they invited their son, Joe, and Carl Sue to come, and they uh, weren't too anxious to come. Because the son was about fed up with camp meetings, grounds, and churches. Is that right? Totally. Totally fed up with them. He was about 14 or 15. 15? And he, was, he didn't much want to come. And uh, they said, but we want you to come. So he came. Carlos, Sue, I think, was on a crutch or a cane? On a crutch. Isn't it wonderful I can remember this? 19 years ago? This month. June. 68. And do you know that Jesus came under those trees and they never had to ask their children to come again? And he turned the hearts of the children to the fathers, and the fathers to the children. And that's happened with the Hubbards, and the Moors, and the Shavers, and the Lights, and the McPhails, and a few others. I can't remember them all. Very states. Brought the children to the fathers, the fathers to the children. Home after home, city after city, and state after state. And we want to praise Jesus for it. Praise the Lord. Thank you, O God. He said to you. Review how God has been merciful to us, oh, helping us, Help granting us guidance. You. you may come and lead us in prayer, please. <laughs> Maybe for the first time, but uh, I would like to express the fact that I would to God that tonight I would pray unreservedly.
Amen. Oh, God, help us to do it. I am so convicted <laughs> by women who testify and pray unreservedly, and not many of us men seem to be able to do that. Yes, sir. Help us, Jesus. I'm glad that Robert Morey would give a testimony unreservedly. Yes, that's sir. it. Oh, that's, yeah. that's it. Yes, sir. That's right. And uh, Praise the Lord. So for one, I, I plead your help that by God's grace, I've been seeing woman after woman after woman lately do things unreservedly, yes, yes, like a Mary, hallelujah. a Magdalene. By God's grace, I'm putting in for it. Amen. Yes, sir. Glory, Glory to God. Glory. Jesus, help me. Thank you, Dear Jesus. Father, we come to worship Thee, to love Thee, to praise Thee, to honor Thee, to glorify the Lord tonight together. To my heart. We come to bless Thee. We come to thank Thee. We come to magnify the Lord to together. Oh, Jesus, we come to rejoice in God, in the hope of God, in our salvation, in Your redemption through the blood. Oh, Jesus, we come to love Thee. We praise Thee. We honor Thee. Oh, how can we say thanks for the great things you have done for us we thank you for your mercy and your grace that has brought us all together that has saved us through the blood that has brought us by the grace of God and the grace of the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit we do marvel in thee in thy greatness in thy goodness in thy kindness tonight I tell you Holy Spirit we're in debt to thee for everything tonight I thank you for mediating to us the grace of Jesus I thank you for leading us and guiding us and directing us to this hour. I thank you for this hour. I thank you for God's servants. I thank you for these on the platform. I thank you, Jesus, that you've led them and guided them and directed them to be a blessing to us and to be a help for us and pray for us. Oh, Jesus, I thank thee. I thank you, Lord, for the great things you have done to bring our children to the kingdom and to the service of God. I thank you, Lord, for healing us in different times through the years by the prayers of the saints. I bless thee tonight. Oh, Jesus, I do pray that you'll find in us such a heart tonight that will always give reverence to God, give praise to the King, give thanks unto Jesus. Oh, Jesus, how can we say great thanks tonight for the things you have done for us? Oh, Jesus. I pray that you will guide and you will direct. Help us, Lord, with proper humility to approach thee before the throne of grace. Oh, Jesus, help us with a humility of heart and submission of soul to worship thee in spirit and truth. Oh, Jesus, we acknowledge our need. We are poverty-stricken without thee always. But I want to thank you for the grace and abundance of God that comes to fill us and help us and strengthen us in Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I do praise you Glory. with my being. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank Glory. Glory. Thank Glory. You, Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, Jesus said, under his authority, under his leadership, he says, I am in the midst. Not where we arrange, not where a group of fine people plan, but it's where the Holy Spirit directs. That's where he is. He's the one that leads it, not our arranging it. See, for 1900 years, he's wanted to lead the church. In the first 100 years, they ceased being led by the witness of the Holy Spirit. They started going by the council and by boards. He wants to lead by the Holy Spirit. This is God's will. Hallelujah. Praise his name forever. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated. The Academy Band's going to play Lead On, O King Eternal. In 1938. 38, 38 yes. Yeah. 49 years <laughs> yeah. this summer. He was 12 years old and I was past 22. Uh, a few months over that. And he wanted me to play checkers with him. You've heard me tell this over and over and over great, again. Great. He's 12 years old. And as soon as he asked me to play with him, why, my plans that I had to be with Howard and Earl and Thomas had to be put aside. See, I'd been away. I was at the pastorate. And I wanted to be with my friends that I was converted with, that I'd played with, had been with. That's what I wanted to do. 
And my little brother, little boy, want me to play with him. See, I did deny myself. Right. So when I denied myself, he was converted. Glory. Amen. Been in the church 12 years, prayed all those years, and never knew Jesus. Uh, when Jesus came into his heart, he was so happy we got mother and daddy awake to tell them. Tell them, inform them that their son... Edwin Howard had been converted yes. <laughs> 49 years ago. Oh my, that was a great evening. Oh, it was a great evening. Beautiful. Oh, wonderful. Yes, sir. It's one of the most wonderful evenings you'd ever had. Oh, you bet. Oh, it Praise was wonderful. Oh, it, Holy wow. Spirit yeah, was 49 so years ago. Seems like a little while. Only like yesterday. Just a while. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Just Amen. think, the Thank privilege you. of leading him to Jesus, my own yeah. brother, yeah. when he was a boy, called to be a bearer of good news. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. This tune, whenever they play, we have to tune them whenever we breathe. <laughs> That's bad. We only get in tune as we die and obey and listen and follow. That's how we keep in tune. We get in tune by coming and surrendering and knowing God's will, you see. But we only keep in tune when we follow. Hallelujah. Getting in tune. See, the whole body of Christ, when they get in harmony, then the kingdom comes. about the serenade.
You have one moment by moment, I believe, for tonight. Glory. It's a story of your life too, brother. Is it? Moment by moment. Oh yes, yes. It is, it is. That's the truth. Moment by moment. Lead on the King, Colonel, mm -hmm. and serenade to it. Yes, yeah, moment by moment. That's right. It's true. The pastor just said this story of our life. Got in the car last night and Richard Moore was so excited. He said, brother, your life has been a mystery. <laughs> I said, Jesus, you can help me by God's grace from now on through the blood of the Lamb. I didn't know you were going to preach on that. And, and uh, Wednesday night in our home, I read you that little poem mm -hmm. on our wall that said, you, I said, you are a mystery. You are a living mystery, yeah. Reverend Al. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful story of his love, isn't it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. going to have the church band now with Revive Us Again with the choir.
Thank you very much. Appreciate that beautiful number.
Glory, glory, glory. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, that was great. Oh, that was so precious. It was. Oh, it touched my heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Isn't that great how God would lead like that and bless like that? Help us like that. Praise the Lord. Well, on that camp property, I've been deeply stirred. And when the Lord led us to southwest Indiana to Fairhaven Christ Fellowship, when I shared with them about the camp and seeing the need of our young people as well as our older people to have a place, a conference center like this, they were stirred as well, have been and look forward to the participation that we'll have in it. And when we received the letter informing us of some of the needs with the camp, we wanted to share in it and hope to in the future as well with our giving as well as with our attendance. And we were able to take up an offering, the Fairhaven people, and I told them that I'd present to you and the West Shore congregation on their behalf this check for $1,000 for <laughs> Camp Courage. Thank you so much. Thank you. That, that represents a hundred. That represents a hundred more blocks, and uh, toward that uh, bathhouse we're breaking ground for tomorrow. And uh, when you come to visit Camp Courage, it'd be rather uncomfortable without a restroom facility and a bathhouse, right? And so we're thankful for for that. Pass it for us. Praise God. Our youth choir under Jerry Keller has traveled south for the last two years, and God has used him in a wonderful way. And I felt this year they should go north. And uh, as we contacted you and Pastor Keller, he felt that they should come and make a contribution. So by God's grace, in July, they'll leave on the 19th and come here, and they will pay for and construct a 24 by 60 picnic and shelter house and give it to the camp from White Harvest Christ Fellowship Youth. That, that's quite a quite a project. They they have about uh, thirty one hundred dollars just in materials, and they are uh, having that delivered from that kit delivered from Northern Indiana and brought up to the camp. And to do that, and their young people are staying for a week. And uh, I didn't know what any better time than anniversary week to be able to share that, those two special gifts, love gifts, to help us in that. It's uh, very, very wonderful, Brother Helm. We're, we're yes. grateful to the Lord for, uh, for this. And yes. we're looking forward to the, the days ahead and what God's going to do. We're, Amen. we're excited about that. Some of you don't know this, but uh, several years ago, uh, the Lord had laid on my heart that we were to have a camp. And... Uh, and it touched Brother Helm's heart when, we, when he shared with him about it. So we found a beautiful piece of property north of here, about 60-some miles. We saw it. The board was excited about it. We picnicked there. We had a wonderful time. It, was, it seemed so beautiful. It was, just a, it was just a few hundred yards off Lake Michigan. It was, had a big man-made lake on it and the whole thing. And uh, when we prayed with Brother Helm about it, the Lord says, pray. Be careful. Yes. Don't get that. He says, son, don't get that one. God will provide a camp someday. He will have the right one, but this isn't it. Right. Something wasn't right. Two years ago, I picked up the newspaper, and I read a little article snuck somewhere in the back pages. You know what it said? Army Corps of Engineer declares dam unsafe. It was the dam that held back the lake that would have been the lake on the camp property that we would have been buying. And the Holy Spirit said, no, don't get that one. That's a mystery. How I wonder he'd reveal that, saved all that situation. It would have cost between one half to one million dollars to put a new dam in. There you go. Jesus helped us there. <laughs> So, 
See, you see, if it wouldn't have been, you see, it's a mystery. Yeah, it is. Holy it's part Spirit. of the mystery. It is. We didn't know. We didn't know why the Lord said no. Right. It was a beautiful piece of property. Yes. Yes. We didn't know why. Right. The Lord said no, not no. this one. No. And we didn't know till later, and the mystery was revealed. And why? You think of that. Think of what we'd have had on our hands. Oh, that, tremendous that would have loss. been a you. Oh, what a burden. Tremendous loss. What would? What a loss that would have been. And uh, now the Lord has given us a piece of property that has uh, over 1,300 foot of frontage on the Muskegon River. And uh, we're, we're grateful to God for that. Yeah. Yeah. And how the, the Lord has done that. Yes. And help. And uh, I'm thankful we were able to believe the report in this place. Yes. yes. And wait on God and not, not get ahead of him so that he can provide what we were supposed to have at the proper time, yes. the proper yes. hour. Yes, yes. And we're most grateful for that. For that. Yes. I want to be thankful to these people for supplying Amen. this for us for West Shore Christian Fellowship. Uh, uh, and I want us to really thank the Lord for their provision because the Lord provides in various ways. And I want you to let you know that from my heart, I'm deeply appreciative of this. Uh, yeah, so we... the finance alone, not plus the anxiety and the trouble it would create it. And problems that people would say, why did they do that? Why did the Lord lead them to do that when this is already in its process of decaying? But the Holy Spirit saw it, so he said, just don't get that one. It's like one, uh, we always wanted to go to Florida. But my wife and I had so little finance to go on. And we were in prayer in 1944 with Brother and Sister Barr and the Holy Ghost came down, revealed to uh, the servants that God would uh, someday take us to Florida. And sure enough, it came to pass in 1952. And they said, we'll take you, Mr. and Mrs. Wolf, I refer to, we'll take you any direction, any highway God leads you. We will eat at the restaurants, he says. We'll stop at the filling stations he leads you. He will stop at the motels or hotels, whatever he leads you, that's what we'll do. I never shall forget that my brother said, when you get to uh, Silver Springs, don't let the cost of it keep you from getting out there to see the beauty of it and I. I shall never forget, we went up, and of course he had the, all these little boats all lined up, you know, be beautiful ships there at Silver Springs. And it must have been between six and eight, maybe ten. And we, they were loading them all up, and we came to this one, and, and the Jesus told me not to get on this one. So I said to my wife, and I said to brother and sister, Wolf and Virginia, I said, we're not to get on this one. I said, just stand back, get clear back, and let all of them get on there but not us. So they loaded it up. We got on the next one. 
And we hadn't got very far out there until that one stopped. They had to go out and tow it in. That's a mystery. <laughs> That's a mystery. One time I was in Oregon with your pastor and I just arrived there. This was March of 1968. And I had a son with me by the name of Kenneth Wagner. And he was so uh, thrilled about the fact that God would let me go in an airplane. Because he liked airplanes so much he'd love to jump, jump out in parachutes. And how many times have you jumped out? 33 or 4? 36 times. And I never wanted to get in an airplane. That's one thing I didn't want to do. Because I fell out of a tree when you and Edward were born, you know. They liked to kill me and I was afraid of height. That was 1926. So I never wanted to get up high. I appreciated seeing sights, but I didn't want to fall anymore. You know, if you fall once, you trust you'll never fall again. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's a lesson there. Yes, sir. And I'd have friends with their planes, and they'd say to me years before, now it's like silk up there today, just get in this plane, I'll take you a ride. I said, thank you very much for your kindness. I don't believe I want to go. <laughs> that was in the 30s and 40s. But in March of 1968, I got a surprise. When I prayed about going, I said, Lord, do you want me to go? May I go by bus, by car, by train, or by plane? He said, you're going by plane. And that's exactly what I did not want to do at all. I didn't want to get in a plane. How do you think I felt? Well, I don't know. I'll tell you. But that settled it. I said, I'm going by plane. That's all there is to it. I'm 52 years of age, never wanted to fly. And uh, so... Uh, that day, uh, son John came and took us. We went up to Artley and Roos at Mentone. We had a great time. I think Thomas was there and Joan Lynn. Uh, we had a meeting till uh, maybe Mark, Brother Morgan, I'm not sure you could have been with us. I'm not sure whether you and Dorothy were there. But we had a great time till two in the morning. And uh, I started, I prayed and I started to get into bed. And just as I got into bed, he spoke and he said, you're going to have trouble on the flight today. I said, what? Well, he put me sound asleep in a moment. I wish I'd go to sleep every night like that. I sound asleep and just, just a little bit, just a moment or two, I went sound asleep. Forgot all about what he told me. Never came to till I sit down in that 727. You know, hair feel. Just as my body touched the seat, the Holy Ghost said, there's something terribly wrong in this plane. So I said to Kenneth, he was so excited because... He, always, he called me daddy because he never got to see his dad. He said, we're going to have a great time. And I turned to him and I said, son, Jesus just told me there's something terribly wrong in this plane. He said, what? He said, oh, it gets on my heart. I said, nobody knows this but us, so we'll just have to trust. And the place is full, 120 passengers. And we started down the runway. We got up to about 130 to 140 when the big engine exploded. Exploded. That's an awful boom. It exploded twice. Of course, they put the other two engines in reverse, put it as strong as they could, and put on the brakes, and we stopped just at the end of the runway. That's a long one in O'Hare. Probably one of the longest, would you say? Two miles long. Yeah. I sure glad it was long enough. <laughs> uh, just a few days after that, son Kenneth read about a plane in England, London. It was just like we were on, 727, same thing. And uh, that plane lifted 500 feet when that engine exploded, dropped immediately, killed everyone on board. It was just 10 days after this. I prayed to God about that and asked Jesus how many angels were with us. He told me how many angels were with us to cause that engine to explode before we got up. So we got on another plane about three hours. He's so happy we're going to be on another wonderful flight. We get up about 25, 30,000. Now before we went, they had predicted snow for three days. My father said, there's going to be such snow come, son. I don't know whether you're going to get out of here. I said, well, I'm asking God to hold the snow back till we get on board. Well, he held the snow off, 
And after we left, the snow was so deep, you remember that Vera and the children had to go out and shovel her out. Oh, it was a lot of snow. Couldn't get in or out. Well, we got up about 25 or 30,000 feet. Of course, I'd never been up before. I'd never been just a few feet above the earth. As far as the, and, and a plane, never like that. And uh, we got up. He said, oh, we're going to be up above the clouds and beautiful sunlight and we're going to have a great flight, wonderful flight. I said, oh, son, there's something wrong with this plane too. <laughs> he said, what? I said, there's something wrong with it. Uh, I said, well, I have to pray. We're up 25, 30,000 and there's something wrong with it. And I had 1,700 miles to go. Right, there. And so when we got to uh, Portland, Oregon, I'll tell you, there was ambulances, there was fire trucks, all come out there. We came down to land and the landing gears would not go down. And the pilot was sweating. And I said, Jesus, I said, the, the, get into these gears and let it work. Send the power and help us get into these gears and let it go down. You were there. Well, I saw it. There were wheels were back like this instead of like this. And God gave us a safe landing. See, he, but he told me way back in Chicago and Iowa that there's something wrong with that plane. Isn't it wonderful that he'd be so merciful to protect us like that? I never will forget, we were coming in from Israel by the way of Europe, and there were so many in New York City, uh, John F. Kennedy, that we could not go. We had to land in Bangor, Maine. And we were on a 747, and we landed at Bangor, Maine, and it's just a small airport. And we were out of water, out of everything we needed on that ship and there wasn't anything high enough to reach us and if they could there wasn't anything big enough to take care of us. And when we landed on that little airstrip I saw a two before go through engine number one. I saw right through it just like that. You saw it too. Yes. Oh I said Jesus help us, help us, help us. We're in trouble. They found out the thing wouldn't get out of reverse. Couldn't go forward. And here I had a hundred of our people and about 300 of other dear ones and the other 300 were upset and they were, there was a lot of trouble on that ship. So our hundred went to and said, it'll be all right, don't worry about it, just praise the Lord. So they just all seasoned the group and got them encouraged. Remember that? Well, I saw they had an engineer come. Uh, when he came up the ramp, I saw him coming up to uh, the uh, little ramp there and the carrier and I'd watch his face I saw he didn't know what the trouble was they'd bring another one and I could tell by his face he didn't know either I said oh Jesus sent us an expert we need an expert here because engine one will not go forward it'll go in reverse and we need to get off the ground we don't have any water we have anything for toilet facilities and food and so on and we can't get off of this place, it's too high. They haven't any equipment to help us. I pled and I said, Jesus, I, if you would have heard me pray, it would be something. Because I really cried hard. I said, oh God, help us and send us an expert. It wasn't more than one, two, three, three minutes till the little maroon truck stopped. I saw this nice looking man get out. Just as it stopped, God says, I'm with you now. I'm underneath. I saw him reach in, get his little case, went up the conveyor belt. And I looked at his face and I said, I believe God will help him. <laughs> I was with the uh, co-pilot in Bermuda just five weeks after that. And he said that when he looked it over, he called shortwave into Kansas City. And he said, I believe if I change three bolts and do a certain thing, I believe I can get it out of reverse. They said, that sounds good. Try it. it try we tried it and worked. Glory. It's a mystery. Hallelujah. God got us out of that place. He lifted us up out of there. We praise him. I'll never forget. We were coming over the Mediterranean. See, we've crossed the Atlantic now 54 times. The Lord protecting us. The Lord helping us in every way. And I remember as we were about two and a half hours out of uh, Tel Aviv, that son John came down and he got beside me on his knees and he says, Daddy, 
Lorraine is crying very hard. Now Lorraine had been uh, many times by plane and was traveling in various countries. And he said, Dad, Lorraine had a dream. And in this dream, she saw everyone sitting on the plane just like we're sitting. She said, everything is just exactly this and we're all killed. She saw it. She's crying very hard. And she wasn't a woman of emotion. Not at all. So he said, Dad, she thinks we're going to fall. I prayed and I said, go back and tell her by God's grace we're not going to fall. But I want to tell you we came a close one that time. Because when we landed, they turned the plane too far like that. Carl Roundtree, you were with us. You remember how far over we went? Oh, it just, God just spared us from death right there. It was a miracle. It's a marvel how God delivered us from that awful thing. She saw it. She saw it. She said, they're all killed on this plane. I see it. Son John came up and said, we need help. We need it bad. And he said, oh, Heavenly Father, have mercy on us and take care of this in Jesus' name. Yes. And he did. Yes, I was with Brother Ryan. I was sitting up in the pulpit and he ran up like this. I saw him coming and he said, they just call us from this little village and there's a tornado coming right toward this church. Yes. That won't make your knees feel funny in your heart. Oh, tornado coming right there and there you all are. And I cried to God in Jesus' name and I said, oh God, have mercy on us and lift this tornado clear up in the sky. Lift it away up. And he did. Amen. It was merciful. He was merciful to us. It's by God's grace we can be spared again. So I want to thank him. We want to thank him. Praise him. For every time he's taken care and made a way for us. And we're grateful. <clears throat> Well, I just have a little scripture uh, to talk about here for a moment, or minutes, whatever. Uh, Jesus <clears throat> said to the apostles in Mark 7, verse 31. Mark 6, chapter 6, verse 31. Mark 6, verse 31. Father, we give thee the praise for your presence. We'll need thee now in these next few moments. For it's for your grace and spirit that it could be, that this could be for Jesus' glory, that thou could lift our hearts together. We praise thee in Jesus' name. For each soul to be saved, each soul to be cleansed from the carnal nature filled with the Holy Spirit, that touches my heart yeah. to be cleansed and carnality and filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes. For this is thy work. Man can do nothing but fail, but he can do all things wonderful and blessed and victorious. So we give thee praise for each blessing and victory in thy holy name, Jesus, in heaven. Amen. Amen. Jesus said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart, into a desert place and rest a while. And there were many coming and going and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Now here was a group of people and uh, there were many and there were situations and it says that they had in all of this experience they had a situation that they seldom had. They had no leisure to, so much as to eat, for they hadn't any food, and they departed then into a desert place by ship privately. And when they went out, they thought in secret, the people saw these people and had watched them departing. So many found out about it, and many knew Jesus, and they ran afoot, uh, thither out in the cities and they outwent them and they came together unto them. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as a sheep not having a shepherd and he began to teach them many things. 
It says he began to teach them many things. What things? What things did he teach that day that are not written in this book? He taught them many things. Now how much is many? And what does many consist? And it said that Jesus at this time taught this group of people, this multitude, many things. And when the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far spent. Uh, send these dear ones away, that they may go into the country round about, into the villages, and buy for themselves bread, for they have nothing here to eat. Now Jesus had a meeting. He's had a long meeting. It's taken, I don't know how many hours he's spoken. He's taught them many things. Be a wonder to know how many hours he taught them, wouldn't it? And after all these hours of teaching them many things, perhaps something of the mystery of the kingdom of God, and here they said, we have anything to eat, and they're tired and weary, and the apostles said, you send them into the villages, that they may buy some bread, for they haven't here any provisions. And Jesus answered and said unto his apostles, Give ye them to eat. <laughs> they thought they'd have to go to the villages and the, and the grocery stores, all the places, provisions, and Jesus did it. He said, You just give them what you have. <laughs> Uh, this is a mystery. <laughs> this is a mystery. He, they said, we've got to go where provisions are. You know what he said? He said, you have them right here. Now that's rich. He said, you have the, all the provisions you need right here. Now they thought they were going to have to go where much provision was and buy 200 penny butter of the bread and he said, you don't have to do that. He said, just give them what you have. That's a, now this is a mystery. Yes, this is a mystery to me. Yes. That when they didn't have anything to speak of, that they thought they'd have to send the apostles, the, the people, the crowd, the multitude away. And Jesus said, it isn't necessary. Glory. Now this is a mystery. Yes, yes it is. Just think. He said, it's for you to know the mystery. And they thought they were going to have to have a lot of bread. I don't know how many hundred loaves they thought they'd have to feed. 5,000 men and 5,000 women and 5,000 children. Because where you have 5,000 men, you'll find about 5,000 women. And where you have 10,000 people, there'll be a child or two. Or more. And they said it's going to take uh, scores or hundreds of loaves of bread to feed 5,000, 10,000 people. And Jesus said a startling thing. It's a, it's a mystery. He said, you give them to eat what you have here. They don't have to go get it. They don't have to walk into the village to eat. This is a mystery. They don't have to go and get it. We have it right here. <laughs> Now oh, this is an old story. It's been preached on lots. He said, they don't have to go. Just have them stay here. Yes, now he had given them the words of life, taught them many things, and now they're about to see a marvelous miracle, a mystery take place yes, sir. with a little of nothing. Yes, sir. And he answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they said to Jesus, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves have you here? He said, Go and check up on it. Go and see. Now he knew how many they had. He knew when they were baking the bread. He knew their problems and their heartaches. See, he knew all the heartaches of the bakers that had already baked this bread. Yes, he knew all their trials. He knew all their struggles. He knew all their disobedience. He knew all their diseases. He knew their, all their upheavals. He said, you go and check on how many loaves you really have here. You don't have to go buy and purchase. We have everything we need right here. Now, this is a mystery. It's a mystery. 
It's a spiritual mystery. Right. And here he's telling them to go and see what they have and when they knew. <laughs> now he already knew. He wanted them to learn what it was. And it said, and when they knew. See, he already had all the information yes, sir. in his mind, yes, sir. in his heart. He had it already. And when they knew, they came back, and when they knew, they said to Jesus, we have five loaves and two fishes. And they were astonished, and they were amazed uh, that he would send them on such a checkup as this. Why would Jesus ever send them to check up on five loaves of bread and two little fishes? The ruler of the universe that put the stars in their orbits, the planets where they belong, yes, that he'd send them out to find out how many loaves they had, which he already knew. This is a mystery. And they came back, and when they learned it, when they found out, they said, we have five loaves here, and we have two little fishes here. And when they looked at Jesus, he wasn't discouraged at all. He smiled at them, and they could see by his face something was about to take place. A miracle was in there. A miracle was in their presence. A mystery was about to develop on the stage of time. And Jesus did something wonderful here. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, he looked at their face. They knew right away that he was the master of the circumstance. Yeah, they said, we have five loaves here and two fishes. I'm thrilled all over nearly. And he commanded them to make all the people sit down. He wanted them to sit down so they could relax and eat and partake there wasn't any use for them to stand up any longer he said just have the people all sit down because they were going to have one of the greatest meals they'd ever had <laughs> he said you have all the people to sit down by companies upon this green grass and they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. I want you to see that Jesus had them organized yes, sir. in groups. Yes, sir. What's that? He had fifties over here and hundreds over there and fifties over here. He had everything ready. And when he had taken this little provision of five loaves and two fishes, he took them into his hands and he looked up to heaven. Now they're about to behold a mighty miracle, a mystery, yes. right before their eyes. Yes, he took in his hands these five loaves, these two fishes, and he looked up to heaven and he blessed and he broke the loaves and he gave them to his disciples to sit before them and to feed them with two fishes divided he among them all. It said he took two fishes and took them in little fragments and divided them to thousands of people. Two fishes. It said he took two fishes and divided the two fishes among them all. A mystery is beheld. <laughs> he took... I'm glad that they didn't choke on the bones. I'm glad it was flavored well. I'm glad it hadn't been spoiled uh, all day, two days. But the heat was still fresh. And Jesus took those fishes and divided just two fishes among thousands. Uh, see, now we talk about this, but I can't comprehend it. It's too great for me. See, it's too great for me to to try to tell you the story. It's too high for me. It's too great. And he divided among all these thousands, uh, just two little fishes, divided he among them. Oh. Yes, sir. oh. I want you to know there wasn't one of the thousands omitted. Yes, sir. There was not one person who was left out. Amen. Every one of the thousands had a little bit of fish. And they had never eaten fish like this before. I believe it had a flavor that the Sea of Galilee was startled. Said, how did all that get in this fish anyhow? They didn't find it in this pool of water. And he divided this among all the thousands. 
a peepaw. And they wonder what's about to take place in verse 42. And they did all eat and they were filled. Hallelujah. What? Oh, oh. That's, a, that's a, a mystery. This is a mystery. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Isn't it great that God would take this little bit of fish and feed all the people and they all ate, and in the Hebrew it said they gorged. The word filled, gorged. That is, they ate, and they ate, and they ate, and they kept eating, and they kept eating, and they ate five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, twenty minutes, thirty minutes, thirty-five minutes, forty minutes, fifty minutes. Fifty minutes they had gorged. It took them about fifty minutes, didn't it? Let's see how it's a minute is, forty... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Between 45 and 50 minutes. They did all eat. And they were filled. Now, how long does it take you to fill up? Oh, brother. <laughs> <laughs> this is a mystery. <laughs> and they were all filled. What does that mean? What does that mean when it said then they were all? That's a thousand. They were all filled. Now, how far is filled go? If they were all filled, how far is filled? How much is filled? Were you ever filled? Did you ever eat all that you could possibly partake? I'd say, I can't take another bite. I can't take another bite. Not one more bite, then you're filled. <laughs> How much is that? Now oh, that's a mystery. Well, now that, these are marvel. These precious men and women didn't mention the women, but there were some women there, no doubt, somewhere. Yes. And they were all satisfied. They were all filled until hunger had fled far away. They were so filled that food no longer attracted them. They were so satisfied that they said, let me get away from the kitchen a while and get into the garden. <laughs> they were in the midst of a mystery. <laughs> They were in the midst of a mystery, a wonder, a miracle of him feeding all the thousands. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, that, that's precious. That God can take the word of God and fill us full of his truth and love and we just simply are satisfied. So they were in the, they were in the midst of a wonder and they viewed a mystery, and they were all satisfied, filled, and could not have another bite. Now that's, that's a mystery. And then verse 43, we're not through with mysteries yet. See, that's not the only mystery they're in. There's another one coming up. Now the first one was a lot. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was a lot. The first marvel to me was that they didn't know they had enough to take care of what was there. And then when he took so little and made it so much, until they were all so satisfied and so glad with the whole meal, that he said to the group of leaders, he said, now, lest anything be lost, Let's gather up all the fragments of the leftovers. Let's gather all the leftovers and bring them in so there's no loss at all. See, Jesus never lets anything be lost, even to little pieces of fish or little slices of bread. Everyone that follows him always takes care of every little item. Our daughters used to say to me when they were little about 40 years ago, 
35, 40. Well, Daddy, why are you so particular about all these little things? I was talking to someone the other day and I said, there's no little things in everything. There are no little things in everything. Me. Yeah, you. Yeah. There's no little things in everything. What is everything? Verse 43 said, And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments of the fishes. No, they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. This is a mystery. Yeah. This is a mystery. And they had 12 baskets. Now to me, it's a mystery how they had 12 baskets. <laughs> it's a mystery how they would have, think to bring 12 baskets. Because all they thought about was hearing the word of God. And he said, you take the 12 baskets and you go out. And I want you to know that he made sure that every basket was full. They had just enough to fill 12 baskets. How did, he work, how did he work that out? 12 baskets full. Is that what your Bible says? It says they had 12 baskets full. Now we have all the stomachs full and all the baskets full. Of course, they had filled till they were gorged. See, all the stomachs were full and all the baskets are full. And where did all this come from? <laughs> it's a sight to behold, isn't it? It is. It's something to behold. How so little could go so far. And they are in the midst of a wonder, a mystery. It's given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. I was stepping on a bus. I had my Bible with me. I was in the 40s. I just started to step up in this bus. And just as I started to touch the first step, Jesus spoke to me and told me there was a person on this bus that was going to commit suicide. So I said, well, Jesus, have mercy upon me. So I walked slowly through the bus, real slow. And... No one knew what was going on but Jesus, the Holy Spirit. And when I went slowly to the back of the bus, when I passed the one who was going to commit suicide, he told me in my heart, I didn't stop immediately. You never stop when you find something out. You keep going to the end. You see, as I went by, he told me which person it was, so I went all the way back to the bus, then carefully, slowly came back to the one that was going to take their life. I made it a purpose to sit down so I could talk to this person close. This person had a little six-year-old boy with them. So I said a few words. I said, this is a wonderful day the Lord's given us and began to share about the kingdom of God and how the Lord had been so merciful to us and they were receptive and appreciative. And after I talked, maybe 15, 20, 30 minutes, I said, now, may I say something? The person said, you may. I said, may I say this? What you had planned to do when you get home, please don't do it. When you get home, don't carry out your plans. You go into your bedroom. You take the Bible, like mine. You get down beside your bed. And you look up and get acquainted with the writer and the author. Give your heart to Jesus and your troubles will slip away. <laughs> I never heard from that until March, April of 1969. In April of 1969, I was in the French church in Parker City in a meeting. You were there. You were there. My wife was there. Uh, I'm not sure whether my children were there or not. Roger was there. And the church was full of people. Our friends had come in from various areas, uh, from the state of Indiana and Ohio. And in the midst of it, Mrs. Knight stood up. Mrs. Knight was the type of my mother's mother. And uh, she said to the people in my hometown, she said, now, 
You people do not know about the person in this pulpit, but I want to tell you something. I want to give you a first-hand story of how God has worked and how God has led to Jesus' glory. So she took the congregation and me back to that day when her daughter-in-law was getting on this bus to go back in the state of Michigan with their grandchild, little six-year-old grandchild, little boy, and she told the whole congregation what took place, which, you see, she didn't know. that All she knew was that her daughter came from Michigan to Bluffton, Indiana, so that the grandparents, she and her husband, could love this little grandson for a few hours, and then her plan was to return by bus, go into the home here in a certain city in Michigan, go and turn the gas, go into the room, and lie down and let him go to sleep. She found this out later. She learned that when this daughter, this daughter-in-law went home, she did what I told her to do. She knelt down, gave her heart to Jesus, found the Christ, and began the Christian walk. She raised the little boy, and she, that mother that night of April of 1969, she said, that little boy is ready to become a medical doctor. That was a mystery. That was a mystery. It is given unto you to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. His indwelling to let Jesus save you, sanctify and cleanse you, and lead you that you may do his will and give God all glory, all praise for every soul victory, for everyone spared, for everyone brought to life, so that Jesus may have the full preeminence in every heart and every soul that will heed and will follow by denial, by inner crucifixion, by the indwelling Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, we pray that thou will let our hearts be partakers of this, thy divine nature, to become in thy likeness, that we shall be like thee as we follow and as we obey, dying from morning to night to do it, knowing that in ourselves dwelleth no good thing but in Jesus only. We thank thee for this glorious truth a hidden mystery from the carnal nature, but a revealed truth to the spiritual man and woman. We give thee the glory for every one that was saved, every one that was sanctified, every one that was cleansed, every one that was healed, and every one was filled, and all the baskets gathered in. In Jesus' name, we praise thee. Amen. Let us stand, please. Karen, would you come to the piano? We're going to start to sing, Just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And while we sing about this blood of Jesus and about coming just as we are, I trust those of you that do not know him in your heart that you will no longer stay in that darkness, that you will make up your mind that you're not going to tarry in the life of self-assertiveness, but you're going to press your way to the altar of giving yourself away and letting him have full preeminence in your heart and in your life. Would you be willing to do that? Would you hear him? Would you say yes to him? I trust you will as we sing the first stanza. myself away to you. Take me just as I am. I'm a sinner. Save me. Lord, I need thee. Forgive me. Blot out my transgressions from me as far as the east is from the west. And take, I take you just now by faith. I receive you as my personal Savior. I give my burdens, uh, all my questions, and all the heaviness of my heart. I'm going to just let you have it. And I'm just going to go with you by faith. Feeding or no feeding. Feeling or no feeling, I'm going to trust you. You said if we ask you to forgive us, you'll do it. And if we ask you to take our burdens, he will hear and, and take it away. So I pray that you will work in our hearts. And we know you do, even when we leave our seat 
you've already began doing something with us if only we can have faith to believe it so we pray in Jesus name for your work now in the Holy Ghost in Jesus name give victory give victory victory in Jesus Christ by the power of thy presence as we look up to the Christ because our help cometh from above from Jesus in heaven and as we look up his spirit comes down as we have faith to believe praise the Lord and he comes just like he said he would never fails and never comes too late praise the Lord hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus praise you Jesus thank you Jesus for victory through the precious blood thank you Lord thank you Father thank you Father thank you Jesus the Holy Ghost for hearing and answering and moving and speaking and wooing and drawing because thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, to save us and to take our burdens just as we are. We put them in your hands. We turn them over to thee. Amen. I believe. Lord, I believe. Jesus, I believe. Do you believe? Do you accept it? He's already made the provisions. He's already paid the price. All we have to do is just receive it. We don't have to wait any longer. It's already been waiting for us a long time. So we just lay hold on it by faith. And then as we believe and deny ourselves and follow, then we'll have what is ours, whether it's for sanctification or for justification or restoration or for healing or for whatever we may need. He will provide that as we have faith to believe it. And we do not need to wait for emotion, but to have faith to believe it. And if we'll have faith to believe, he'll give us far more than when we want emotion, when we want feeling. Because when we're on feeling, we'll probably have to die to get it. So therefore, we get to praise Jesus for answering prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just give myself to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Just give ourselves away. Lord, I yield myself to you. This is all I can do. That's all I need to do is just trust thee. Jesus, you will take care as we follow and yield ourselves in thy holy name. Praise the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's yours. All you have to do is believe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He helps us. He saves us. He sanctifies us. He gives us what we need in our soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's up to us to believe, to lay hold by faith, trusting by faith. Amen. Trusting by faith. Praise the Lord. Father, we pray for this need here in the soul, the mind, the body. Revelation. Healing. Behold, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. See, I start to go this way. He says, don't move yet. So then I come back. So I know it's either salvation, sanctification, or healing, and it's healing. So I say, in the name of Jesus, receive healing. So now he has spoken through me. Receive it for his glory. And we'll praise him in heaven. For this is a mystery. We praise you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Suffer the little children to come in and forbid them not for such is the kingdom of heaven. Lord, we pray as we bring the little ones to thee and give them to thee.